What's going on everyone, it's Jacob back with another video and today I want to talk about studying. It can be a pretty daunting topic to cover because there are so many different ways to do it and everyone's got a different opinion on it. Now the focus of this video is going to be how I studied for my classes during my first few years of medical school. As you can see, I have my books back here for my boards exams. If you want to see a video about how I studied for my step one and how I'm going to study for my step two exam, make sure you comment down below saying that that's something that you want to see and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date whenever I post. For anyone that's new to the channel, my name is Jacob Pereira. I'm an MS3 medical student out of Kansas City. And today what I wanna to talk about is how I studied personally in my first few years of medical school to help me do well in all my classes and set me up well for my boards exams and my clinical rotations. So first things first, whenever I was taking my notes in my classes, I did use my laptop to type them out. I know that everybody says that you should be writing down your notes, but personally, I'm a much faster typer than I am a writer, and I always transfer my notes from my laptop to paper later on. In terms of which programs I use, I really like Microsoft OneNote, and let me tell you why. So I'm able to download the PowerPoints or the PDFs from the professor's lecture, and I'm able to include all of that here with plenty of space on the side to type out any important notes that I have. Microsoft OneNote also has a great function with the record button up here, so what this lets me do is if your professors are okay with it, you can record their lectures. Then, as you're typing out notes, that note will be associated with a specific spot in the lecture, in the recording. So, if you see here next to this, th this word here, important, there's a play button. If I click that play button, it will take me back to the exact spot in that recording of the lecture where this was typed. So if there's something that I miss or there is something that I really want to re-emphasize and maybe go back and re-listen to, I can click this play button and go back to the specific spot in that lecture where I typed that rather than searching through the entire recording. Now, as you can see here, I don't always have a whole lot written next to these slides in terms of notes. This is because it's very important to be able to filter out what is actually important from what the professor is saying. It's very easy to be able to get an exact transcript and just type down word for word, but part of being a good student and learning how to study effectively is knowing what is truly important. This brings me to my first major tip of how to study effectively, and that is to go to class. Now this seems like very obvious advice and something that everyone should do, but you would be surprised at how many people skip class for no reason or who say, I'm skipping class because I don't have time, I have to study. The first thing you're missing out on if you don't go to class is just the ability to hear the information straight from the professor's mouth. In addition, they also typically emphasize what they think is important and what could definitely pop up on the exam. Another thing you miss out on by not going to class is the ability for you to ask the professor direct questions about the information. And you're also gonna miss out on any any other questions that other students ask that you may have later while studying. If you're missing a lecture because you think you're behind in the class and you want to catch up and study before you learn anything new, just know that you're already putting yourself more at a disadvantage because you're missing out on this lecture and you're going to be putting yourself even more behind. So again, I know this sounds like obvious advice, but make sure you're going to your lectures. This allows you to hear the information firsthand from the person who's going to be testing you. Going to class also kind of counts like your first pass through the information because you're getting exposed to it now in class. You'll probably remember a lot more when it's time to copy down your notes and study later on. So now that my notes are all transcribed onto paper, the primary way in which I study this information is by making multiple passes through each PowerPoint set. I'm a very firm believer in repetition and the more times you see something, the more likely you are to remember it. So let's say I have a lecture on Monday and I get a PowerPoint from that. That night after that class, I will spend the time to transcribe that over to paper that same day. I choose to do it the same day because the information is already fresh in your head from the lecture and you can really solidify it by choosing to study the same day right after the lecture. Like I said, I'm a firm believer in seeing the information as many times as possible. So if I have one lecture that I get on Monday, I'll study that lecture for Monday. If I get a new one on Tuesday, I'll make sure that I'm still studying the one for Monday. And I do that as I continue and as I get more lectures piled on one another. So to illustrate this, I created a little hypothetical schedule for myself for a week. If I get a new lecture, lecture A on Monday, I will then transcribe that lecture onto paper on Monday and have that ready to be reviewed later in the week. Say I get a new lecture on Tuesday, lecture B, I will then review and transcribe lecture B that day, but I'll also make time to review lecture A again. I do this process throughout the whole week, and as you can see, I am seeing all of the information that I have almost every single day. Now you might be thinking, how can I possibly manage all of these lectures once they get piled on on top of each other? Well, if you're reviewing Lecture A on Monday and Tuesday, do you think it's going to take the same amount of time to go through it on Wednesday? 
No, you're gonna be able to do it much quicker. So that's how I allow myself to see all of the information every single day because the more times that you review lecture A or lecture B, the faster you're gonna be able to review it because you're gonna become much more familiar with the information. So as you can see, I give myself time each day to go over every PowerPoint that I've got so far, and then by the time the weekend comes, I can make full entire passes of the information at that time. A big mistake that I see a lot of people making is dedicating an entire day to only one PowerPoint set or one lecture. What happens is if you do this, say, hypothetically, let's say you're going to dedicate Monday all to lecture A, and Tuesday all to lecture B, and Wednesday all to lecture C, you might know those individual lectures pretty well the day you're reviewing it, but by the time Saturday, Sunday comes around, it's been almost a full week since you've looked at lecture A. You're not likely to remember that as well as if you looked at it every single day. This brings me to my next major tip when it comes to studying, and it sounds again obvious, but you need to make sure you know how you study best. Now everybody out there learns in a different way, so you may not always have the same study strategies as your close friends. Are you someone like me that likes to transcribe your notes onto paper and then go over them again and again until they stick in your head? Or are you someone that likes to make flashcard decks and go through them each day? You might also be more of a visual learner and learn best when you're watching online demonstrations or videos about the concepts you're learning about. If you're more of an auditory learner, maybe you would do well in a group setting where everybody is discussing their different ideas and opinions on the concept that you're learning about. I personally prefer to learn information as best as I can on my own and then get together with a group and quiz each other on it. I think I get more out of the group experience that way. The important thing to remember with this piece of advice is that it is okay to not know the answer yet. It is okay to not know what kind of studier you are and that's why you experiment early on and try different things so you can figure out what works best for you. I think I realized how I studied best my second semester in medical school. I started out doing a lot of flashcards and online decks like Quizlet and Anki and I realized that I just got bored easily and it couldn't keep my attention. So think back and try to figure out something that's worked well for you in the past. Talk to your friends and see what kind of different strategies they use. Overall, I think the most important thing to do, especially early in college, is to experiment with a lot of different things and figure out something that works for you and something that you might even enjoy so that you can do it for the long run. This is a great way to transition into my next tip, which is to use multiple different learning techniques. As I said earlier, I like to study on my own initially, but I certainly recognize the benefits of group activities. I like to do a lot of reading, but if I'm confused on a concept, I'll certainly watch a video or listen to a demonstration about it. The more different types of learning that you can incorporate into your study regimen, the better you're going to remember that information because you're getting it from a lot of different sources. The next major study tip that I wanted to talk about is to figure out where you study best. The environment that you choose to study in can certainly have a positive or a negative impact on your studying. With that being said, it is very important for you to figure out what kind of environment you study best in. Are you somebody that studies best when you are alone and isolated in a quiet location? location or do you like to have other people around? There are certainly positives and negatives to both. I like to study at home when I want it to be quiet and when I want to make sure that I don't have any distractions. But I also like to go study in group settings and that can be done at the library as well. Sometimes going to the library and studying on your own is a way to motivate you to study because I personally, when I go to the library and I see other people working around me, I feel like I should as well. Now, me personally, I'm definitely not a big fan of going to very loud places like a Starbucks or other coffee shop, but I certainly have friends that really do well with that. Again, the important thing with this study tip is to experiment with all the different possibilities and figure out what kind of environment is going to suit you best for what type of studying you're doing. Another major study tip, and one that I'm putting into action right now, is to take frequent breaks. No matter how many hours of studying you plan on putting in for that day, taking frequent breaks is a way to keep yourself active and making sure that your studying is always effective. I like to think about my study breaks just like I think about my classes. I much prefer more frequent, shorter lectures because I know I can commit to 45 minutes to an hour of being actively engaged and motivated to learn the information that they're talking about. Rather than a long two and a half hour, three hour class, I may only be able to focus really well for an hour of that. There's a very well known method of taking study breaks called the Pomodoro method. I'll link that down in the description below so you guys can read up on that and see if it'll fit for you. Exercise is a great way to take a study break. It keeps your mind active, keeps your body active, and allows you to get out of the house and do a couple different things. Another study tip that I have that relates to specific things to do while studying is to do lots of practice questions. Research has come out lately that shows that practice questions and constantly finding a way to test yourself is by far the best way to retain information. Think about 
an exam that you've taken in the past where there was a question that you got wrong that you know you should have gotten right. There's a reason why we remember those specific questions and we remember the answers very well is because we have some sort of emotional attachment to being wrong. This is why I think practice questions lead to better retention of information because if you get something wrong, we obviously want to correct that and get it right, which is why we think about it more often and we remember that information better. Another thing that I like to do is to write my own practice questions. If you, using all of your information, are able to write a good practice question, then you understand where the professor is going to go when they're writing theirs, and you're not going to get stumped on those. The basis behind this study tip is to no matter what, always be testing yourself while you're studying the information. So even if you can't find already made practice questions online, get together with a group and quiz each other. That's another way for you guys to constantly test yourself while you're studying to help you remember that information better. Specifically regarding studying with other people and within groups, my next study tip is to make sure that those people that you work with have similar goals and share similar study strategies to you. Finding other people that have similar goals and similar study strategies to you makes it a lot easier to work with them in a group setting and you can feed off of each other when you guys are giving each other information. Working with other people that have similar goals to you is also a great motivational tool because you'll always have someone on your end pushing you to do your best. The last thing that I want to leave you guys with is to be flexible and adjust your study regimen as necessary. Again, everybody learns differently, so something that works for you may not work for someone else and vice versa. So throughout this process when you're learning how to study, continue to experiment with different things and figure out what works best for you. If you have any other questions about how I studied earlier in medical school or you have some study strategies that work really well for you, feel free to share them down in the comments below. If you guys want to continue seeing more content like this and following along with my medical school journey as I head for graduation and residency next year, make sure you subscribe down below so you can stay up to date whenever I post. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on how I studied my first couple years in medical school and some tips and tricks to make yourself successful and ace all your classes. And as always, I'll see you next time.